big steak and fries to go Listen to what I said I need Something more than soup To keep me satisfied Give me food That's what I want Bolognese all through the days Can't win to the mayonnaise Give me food That's what I want Chicken curry Bring it here in a hurry It's food that I want That's plenty. Are we live? Are we live? We are live. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Um, our special guest today, because we're allowed guests now, Boris said it was okay. Our special guest today is a long-time supporter of the channel and the show, and a good friend, was Kevin McMillan. Hello. Oh, and we have a guest cam, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> other than that. No guest cam. Seriously. Why is guest cam not working? Yeah, I I'm broke it already. Oh, just take it's fine. It's okay. Are we back on? Are we on the main cam? Yeah. Okay. Check on. Have you put on your four? Yeah, it's gone. Oh, there it is. There, there we are. Help me press the correct there button. Right. Sorry. There we go. Nibbles has had a wee beer this morning. Oh. Right. So today we are going to talk all things steak, hopefully, and hopefully all things butchery and that kind of stuff. I'll we try. Can educate us all. I'll try. I've been Googling all morning. Googling all morning. <laughs> Butchery 101. <laughs> Ten things butchers say. So, yes, today is all about the steak. So we are going to do four things, hopefully. So we today's not going to be about recipes. Today's going to be about methods of cooking. Um, and everybody, sort of, you go into restaurants and you get steak snobs who will say, oh, I, I only ever eat my steak rare or I only ever do this. Or Different cuts of meat. Different types of steak should be cut, cooked different ways. So we are going to do a couple of ribeyes, which should be medium rare because it's got all that fat. That's what you buy it for. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to give that time to render and do all its good things because all the flavours and the fat. We'll talk about fat. We'll talk about fat yesterday. Yes. Um, so we're going to do one sous vide, which I think you've never had before. I don't think so. <laughs> so we're going to do one sous vide. And we're going to do one traditionally in a pan with some butter and thyme and garlic. Um, sous vide is a French method of cooking. I think it means without air. I basically put it in a backpack, put it in a water bath, and it keeps it at a constant temperature. Good thing about that is if you've got guests coming over, you can do it on the back and never know. overcook. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to do that. So we're going to do a bit of a taste test between traditionally pan cooked ribeye and uh, a sous one. We are then going to do a Japanese dish called beef tataki. We're going to use, a, I call it a D-rump, you call it something else. It's Pope Sighters. Pope Sighters, old Pope's money. <laughs> um, so we're going to use a cracking piece of, of, of rump. We're going to sear that on the outside. Basically, we're going to leave it raw in the middle. It's going to be seared on the outside, uh, then uh, rolled in black pepper, cut really, really thinly almost like a carpaccio, uh -huh. and we're going to serve that with some pickled vegetables. And then we're going to do a flat iron, which you call something else as well. Well, when it's still attached to the other part of the muscle, it's the feather blade. Okay. So flat iron, steak. Flip. The reason we're doing that today is with a bit of sun today, it might be nice tomorrow. It's a fantastic cut to do on the barbecue. Aye. Um, it's getting more and more popular, but it's still very, very underrated. It is. Um, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do a, a fillet um, and then we're going to do a wee quick pan sauce with that um, just to show because a fillet you can go fairly rare with Aye. because it doesn't have that fat. Obviously, as soon as the show is finished, we'll have to take it off 
put it into the oven for six hours because my wife doesn't like rear. <laughs> so, you're, I'm, I'm going to get started. So you're obviously pimping the merch from Donald yes. the Butcher. You want to tell us a little bit about how you get into butchery and how you got how your journey took you to Donald the Butcher? Uh, almost a, not, not quite an accident. Um, I was working um, in a, a car park shop not far from here and I wanted a, a career change, something different. So mm -hmm. at the time, my girlfriend, now my wife, um, Danielle, her uncle Marshall, who owned Donald's um, prior to us, was looking for an apprentice. So, aye, that was that. Now the rest is, is history. First two weeks, I absolutely hated it. I was desperate to go back to my old job. So all I'd done was clean, because that's a big, big part of what mm -hmm. we do, is cleaning and hygiene. It's very important. Um, but after that, as soon as I got a knife in my hand, that was me. I was glad, but nothing to do with butchery. <laughs> 18 years later, I'm still there. Okay, mostly so still there. There's mostly a couple of bits missing. Apart from when you go sky, when you uh, cooking <laughs> So, we're on the overhead. Thanking you. So, a couple of beautiful ribeyes. Um, I see one of, the, one of the benefits of going to one of the many, there are many benefits to going to a traditional butcher over a supermarket. But one of the, the, the benefits of going to a traditional butcher is you can get things a little thicker cut. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a great believer in have great steak once a month than shitty steaks every week. <laughs> so, or have, once you get to a good butcher, have great steaks every week. Um, so the colour on these, I'm just going to season these up. So as you can see from the colour, um, that fat's not white. Mm -hmm. which is what I traditionally associate with supermarkets. Right. So can you tell us why the colour of the fat is important and why you would see that more in a proper butcher's than um, a supermarket butcher's? Well, it's all down to, a lot of down to the diet. So our, uh, our farmer, James, down at Osteads Farm in Annick, um, the cattle are fed mostly on grass um, when they're, they're brought in to be finished. They're on a diet of rolled oats and barley. Mm -hmm. um, that really gives, it, it brings out the fat more so in the, the, the covering. Um, but I'm, my mouth's watering already. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you've done is pay for it. <laughs> Can so, that is, well, we can come back to that. Saying, what I'm going to say as well is if, if you buy steaks, regardless of where you buy them from, as soon as you take them out the paper or whether you take them out the plastic, pack them dry well with um, paper towel. If you can, leave them out on a tray at room temperature and let them come up to room temperature. And also season them in advance of you cooking them. Reason for that being, um, what you want from that salt is to get into the meat um, and draw some of that water out the, the top of the, or the top layer of the meat so that um, you get that crushed right away, you mm. seal that um, that Maillard reaction, I believe that's the technical term for it. So, even though we're not going to cook the other rump steak right now, we're going to season them both, and these are big lumps of meat. Um, okay, so, <laughs> uh, you all knew it was coming. Um, I nearly never laugh. So you, can, oh, you can't really over-season them. You know, you, you, you can put plenty on there because a lot of it will come off, a lot of it will be drawn in, and that's what you want. You want that season to go all the way through. And I say some of it will come off in the cooking. So, good call, and I just salt and pepper. We're not going to mess with these too much. Um, what we are going to do is hope that that's not on. <laughs> that's plastic. <laughs> so, we're going to put them down there just now, and we're going to bring out a new toy to Kevin. It's a new toy to me. Ooh. No, no, it's a new toy to the channel, it's not a new toy to me. This is a backpacker. All right. You have a much bigger <laughs> version of this in the shot. Yours is kind of like, that sounds, that sounds. It's smaller than the one we used to have. We used to have a, a massive one on wheels. You could do uh, two bars to it. The one we've got just now is just a single bar because we don't vacuum pack all that much anymore. They're um, great, great tools to have. So, this is, you can get bags for this. I, I use a roll because you can then dictate how, how big you want it to be. Um, I would usually go one and a half times or two times what you're actually cooking. You just cut it off the roll. So on this one, it's got two settings. One's to seal 
and one's to Sook. I don't know if that's a technical term. Vacuum <laughs> seal, right? <laughs> so click it, click it. Second important safety tip. Plug, plug it in. It in. <laughs> um, so plug that in. Press seal. It makes a bleeping noise. Right, I'm going to read out these comments. What's okay. Quiet. So Karen Clellan said, Good afternoon, Pirate Crew and Mateys. Scott, afternoon. is it Curry or Curry? Curry. Curry. Hello, everyone. Alison Fegg said, Ahoy there. Natalie Ewer said, Hello. Francis McMillan said, Handsome Kevin. That's my mum. <laughs> oh, bless. Marilyn Bruce Ewer said, Hello. And Natalie Ewer said, Hey, Kevin. Well, hello, all. I've got new names, a few new names. Might be your personal fan club. So, thanks for joining us today. Whenever I use the rules, I tend to double seal them. Mm -hmm. um, that's just me being marginally OCD. So, I've got a couple of seals on that bag. Pick a steak. The one nearest me. Driver's side. So, we're going to put that into a sous vide bag. Healthy. We'll take some time, some aromatics in there. Yeah, you want to get you want to make sure that the um it's a tight fit when your meat. We are going to be drawing all the year out of this. So the next thing it's we're going to do back at work. <laughs> next thing we're going, the next thing we're going to try and do is uh we get lock this down, vacuum seal. Are you sealing or sucking? Uh both. I am sucking <laughs> then sealing. So, as you can see, it's sucking now. <laughs> it will change the noise. Ooh. There's no ceiling. <laughs> A lot of lights went on. It has souped and sealed. What we are going to do, though, is just put a wee extra seal on that one, just to keep it happy. It's like a new version of that song. It's not sign sealed delivered, it's so, sealed, sealed, sealed delivered. <laughs> okay, so we are heading for a medium rear on this, or the top end of medium rear. Um, so we are going to put this in our water bath at 56 mm. degrees. This is a water bath. Um, I'm not carrying a bucket of water, three feet. People know what a bucket of water looks like. Um, <laughs> this is a water, we put this in here while I'm talking, um, a water circulator. Um, so what that is, it's basically it's like an element, like a kettle. It's got a little thermostat in there, and it's got a little propeller. So it keeps that water moving, keeps it always at that temperature. Um, if it gets, as you put cold things in, it'll boost it up, but just keep it at that temperature. Mm. So what we're also going to do um, is a little side dish. We've got some nice asparagus here, and we've got some of this uh, Bernese butter. Compound butter, and I used the parmesan black pepper and truffle mm -hmm. on the lamb episode, which was widely said as that's brilliant. <laughs> um, so, Kevin, tell me, where can we get such a product? Uh, Donald Butcher's, Addingston Main Street. Um, yeah, we've had these in for a wee while now, and uh, they're, they're massively popular. We've got five flavours, I think. The Bernays is one of the most popular ones, the um, parmesan black pepper and truffle as well. Um, garlic and pepper. What is Bernays? Bernays? Bernays sauce is a traditional steak sauce. It's kind of like Hollandaise for steaks. Um, it's mm. got egg yolk, butter, a little bit of vinegar, dill, dill, tarragon, and shallot, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so, what we're going to do, you, we're, we're going to be using it as a finishing butter, but you can also use it. Um, to cut your veggies in mm -hmm. if you're, we're doing them CV. So that steak's going to be in there for about 45 minutes to an hour while we do everything else. When we pull that out, we'll, ascend, giggly, we'll essentially cook everything else. We'll cook the pan steak. But while we do that, we'll crank that up to about 80 degrees, mm -hmm. pop them in for 10 minutes, and that's our veg done as well. That's a great way of cooking veg. So since you enjoyed it so much the first time, another wee soup of the seal. Did he not sing a song, Seal? Maybe he was getting souped when he sang it. Kiss oh. my rose or something. <laughs> a souped from a Bernese butter. That's what my children are watching. Now. I don't think children watch this. It's too many I haven't actually sworn yet. There's a lot of innuendo. 
You might notice I'm drinking water today. Ask me why I'm drinking water today, Kevin. Why are you drinking water today, Peter? <laughs> because I'm going to pick up with your motorcycle. Oh. So, we have done our first souk. Now we're moving into what I like to call the safety souk, or the safety <laughs> seal. So our butter's in there, and it's nice and so compressed. Do you want again? Um, I'm getting a road glide, uh, CBO road glide in Mako Sharp Blue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Assuming that's sealed. Yes, there we go. So we'll leave that for, for later on. That can go over there. We're done with these. These are not expensive. This is 20, 30 quid off uh, Amazon. The water bath thing is... I think you get one of them for about 40 quid on Amazon. Um, what about the machine? No, I can say the CV machine's about 40 quid. The, again, it, it's money, but if you're, if you're serious about cooking, um, I have nowhere to put this, I'm going to put it down here. Um, if you're serious about cooking, you would spend that on a good cast iron pan. Right. If you haven't spent that on a good cast iron pan, you either haven't bought a good cast iron pan, or you're not serious about steak. So you're going to spend the money on the steak, have the right equipment. Aye. To to deal with it properly. So this is a pan steak, which we are going to put over here. So before we move on to this ribeye, where does that sit on the the beast? Where does ribeye sit? Yeah, it's just it's on the back, kind of at the, the top of the shoulder or the top of the front leg. You've got your shoulder, and it's just behind that as it's heading down the back, um, down towards your sirloin. So, people might be more familiar with like T bones and fillets and mm -hmm. um, sirloins. So, ribeye here. Yep. Going down into sirloin, sirloin and fillet. And then, yep, you've got the tail of the fillet just nearer the ribeye. And as you go further towards the back, the bigger the fillet gets. The head of the fillet sits inside the um, the hip bone, the pope's mm -hmm. eye or the rump. Okay, it's kind of underneath the, the D rump that you're talking about. Okay, okay. So, there you go. So, you've got a little bit of. Kevin Anthony, any questions from our... Lauren, Lo sorry, not Lauren, Laura Gallagher said, Hi guys, watching from Dubai. Tommy Docker Kay said, Love the beard, big man. My uncle. Cathy Donnelly said, Go Kevin. Do you not think um, Kevin would suit a beard? <laughs> Turn me down, it's Roger. Dave McGannigan yep. said, Hi daddy, we're watching you. Love Lady Archer and Noah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And these are all being saying bad words. Well, I think there are. We're, we're, we're not Laura, educating Laura here. Gallagher said, Rabbi is my favourite. Tracy's got a question as well. Tracy, who? You? You? <coughs> How do you like your steaks cooked when you're cooking at home? Right, someone else. Like <laughs> there. There. Yeah. So, anywhere, as long as it's on a plate, I'll eat it. Tracy likes What we're going to do here is. Um, Two quick things. This is great for the barbecue, but as you'll notice, there's a thin end and a thick end. Um, it's very spectacular. To, giggly. Uh, it's spectac you're worse than me. <laughs> it's spectacular to have at the barbecue and throwing this big piece, throwing a big bit of meat about. It's fantastic. Aye. What I would prefer to do is take it when it starts to thin out. So you've kind of got that natural break there and cut it in half. Because then you can cook the bigger bit for longer. Uh -huh and then throw this on at the tail end. But we're going to do essentially the same thing to it. Um, and again, today's not about making stuff. Today's about cooking stuff. Um, I keep a variety of these on the drawer for when I can't be bothered grinding my own rubs and stuff. Giggly. Can I say grind and rub in the same sentence and not say giggly? You live with it nibbles. <laughs> so this is from a Smoky Carter. This is a, an English company. Don't say I'm ever anti-English. Um, and they also do a lot of great chili, dried chilies, great products. They're on um, the interwebs. So, um, and this is the Pitmaster rub, which is really good for this kind of thing. And it's good for you, know, you come in at night and you want to stick something on the barbecue quick, bang that on, leave it for 20 minutes. By the time your barbecue's up to heat, Aye. that'll be good to go. What we are going to do though, and I recommend this um, nice little scores. Not too deep, because what we want to do is get that flavour in there, and also 
Make sure you get those kind of nice barbecuey, crispy bits. Aye. Um, so it's this, no burnt, it's not right in a barbecue, is it? Or burnt it's bits. not burnt, it's textured, Kevin, textured. <laughs> um, so, flat iron, where, where does that live on, on the beast? It lives on the shoulder blade. So, the shoulder blade, obviously, both two sides to it. So, one side's completely flat, and on that side is where we would take shoulder steak or chuck for stews and casseroles and things like that. On the other side, there's a wee ridge kind of runs down the, the middle of the, the shoulder blade and the feather blade, which this comes from, sits on one side of them. So it's, it's essentially two muscles with a mm. big bit of sinew that runs right through the middle. Now separating it the way this has been done for flat iron allows you to barbecue it or cook it quickly and have it nice and rare. But if you leave it on the feather blade and just cut it and leave that sinew in it mm -hmm. and slow cook it, the sinew breaks down, you end up with a lovely kind of sticky gelatinous texture. A, a, a mini your, biscuit. Aye. Aye. No, it is... Uh, the only thing that takes too long when the smells wafting through the house, it's, it's unbearable. So the scissor end, not going to score that as much um, because obviously there's less meat there, we don't want to cut all the way through it. Um, with the rubs, hopefully the rub will break up. Try your shaker end. This is my only complaint. The shaker end, the holes are too small. The rubs are brilliant. Aye. But the shakers <laughs> are not. It's done off the rubs as well. We do do a few um, for various different kind of styles of cooking and stuff. Um, we get them from a company called Peak Blends. They're only a year old and they're massive in Britain already. It's all natural. Aye, I've tried really them. good. We use smoky carters. <laughs> no, um, there's nothing wrong with the peak blends ones. I'm just creature habit. And uh, there's loads of companies out there now. Even right. more so through lockdown, there's loads of wee companies popped up that are doing things like this. Um, even before that, I was more lucky that there's so many folk kind of passionate about cooking. So this, it this makes these things easier for everybody else. This particular blend is smoked paprika, onion, pepper, salt, a little bit of brown sugar. Um, some celery seeds, some mustard seeds. It's all sort of ground up. A nice fine. Hello. I was just trying to keep the drill in his mouth. I know. And a little I'm bit of chilli. Get an industrial hose hooked up. <laughs> so when you're doing rubs, make sure you get everything. Make sure you get your meat well covered when you're rubbing it. There we go. Um, and then any any of any of your over rub, make sure you get that on the ends and Can on you the tails. Rub it? Can you over rub it? Well, it starts from a bit nappy. This is wash. I think this is bad week camp point comes on next week. Yeah, so um a few more guests on. Obviously, we've had Mark and um Sharon on. And oh, obviously Kevin today. So we'll be rounding it the season two of the, the Pandalorian. We have um, Karen Poynton, who's uh, an NHS nurse. Um, I'm not going to tell you too much about her because no, that's the whole reason of the yeah. chat. Um, and then we're going to finish off with the always funny um, and usually loud uh, Billy Kirkwood. Uh, for our for our finale, that's no. no that that will be that will just be I'm me swearing at him and him swearing at me. And the, um, the only benefit to that is Billy doesn't drink. I don't. You drink. You don't drink either. No, I've stopped drinking. We have to get, stop get sober people on this show. <laughs> um, so we're going to we're going to leave that there to do yeah, its thing, and then we may actually start cooking some stuff. Right. Okay. Right. Any Paul, questions, comments? Paul Heathy. Yes. He said, get us a shout-out. It's on the clock. <laughs> He's been asking all moment for a shout-out. Is that one of the boys in the shop? Aye. Was that the one that left the silver skin on that? Uh... No, that was Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott, I keep saying this, Curry, is it Curry or Curry? Curry. 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 said, is that hanger steak? No. 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 So explain, while I'm setting up, explain What's to the lovely people the difference, because... I would cook them in very similar fashion. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
you can cook them in very similar fashions. The hanger steak. I'm um, sure somebody just said that. <laughs> no, it comes from. It's one of the muscles that hold in, like the, the diaphragm, basically holds all of the intestines, all of the organs inside the animal. Um, it does. Mm, you can. <laughs> uh, it's a very textured cut. Um, fast cooking, nice and rare. Or you can also use it for um, stews and, and kind of long cooking. But anything in between that, you're going to be chewing it all day. It needs to be Giggly. really rare. <laughs> Really rare or um, slow so cooked. Okay, no, that's great. Right, Laura Gallagher said, "How beat? How are you scoring that?" Um, two mil, and whatever that is in old money. Natalie Gore said, "That looks amazing." Leona said, "Giggity." <laughs> Trisha Canfield said, "Hi, old Richard." Canfield. Oh, that reminds me. Right, keep going. I'll come back to that. Richard can't wait to have lots of foodie chats with you when lockdown is over. I'm just happy to come along and sample it all. Well, I'll just take all that. we done the draw for the birthday show. And Trisha, you won the draw. So either you or a person of your choosing, when we come back for season three, oh, so sorry. we're finishing season two, we're going to record some live shows and then we'll come, we're going to record some recorded shows, pre-recorded shows, and then we're going to come back with season three of The Pandalorian. Or no, season three will be called something else, or season three of Pirate King Live. Um, either yourself, Trisha, or someone of your choice can come and sit in that seat and do this. Not this bit, that bit. Um, so congratulations. Um, you also get one of the Pirate King knives, which is not this one. The, the ones that we're giving out to civilians have white handles. No, it's a white handle Nagiri. Okay. Um, and you'll get one of our chopping boards as well. So congratulations. Um, okay. Congratulations. So, well, Trisha was winning ship, and you were talking about hanger steaks. Um, I put equal parts, like a, a fistful giggly, of coriander, flat leaf parsley, um, um, some spring onion, a hamster's bell end of garlic. I'm I should have took a holiday today. Um, That's what I should have done. A dolphin's nipple of ginger. <laughs> wow. um, and then we are going apple cider vinegar. How much is that? 50 mil. Mm. Well, yeah. Mm. Um, that's how I measure out my gin. Yeah, that's, yeah. Fine. <laughs> I know, that's how I know it's 50 mil. Um, about 50 mil fish sauce. That stuff's pungent, isn't it? Yeah, that's probably all you need 50 mil. But. <laughs> Well, it brings out a lot of the um, umami flavours of, of the Aye. meat. Because we're going to do the beef tataki now. So this is kind of the sauce that goes with the mm -hmm. beef tataki. And this is, um, it's not Chinese rice wine. It's, it's Chinese rice wine. It's not Chinese rice wine vinegar. Um, so this is, uh, that kind of just gives it a... Put them all in the sink. Yes, ma'am. This is the come now. They're going to get put in the sink, yeah. This is not a, a we, there's no audience participation. Um, hope we're also going to add to that as soon as I remember where to put it. Trisha Campbell said, Oh wow, thank you. Chuck the bits. We're probably going to put a so sweet, wheel snorter of honey. <laughs> I don't know. We really should come up with some better. Yeah, I'm just sending laughing faces. I generally just can't go through all of them. I'm just wondering if anybody's ever heard a whale sneezing. If a whale sneezes, does, does anyone? Up and he said to then see it, everyone. You would not believe half stuff that's in my head. I always tell you people to, to, to worry that. about the stuff that I don't say. There's so many things that go through your head, and you say something, go, oh, and I say that one. No. <laughs> so this should be bright, herby, pungent, salty. All that good stuff. <laughs> Just is that a talk amongst yourself. So, what part of the animal does the coriander come from? I can't see that. I'm just thought. <laughs> what I was going to ask is, what is obviously there, there's a visual difference, but flat leaf parsley and curly parsley. Um, flavour-wise and anything else, are they? One from a chef point of view, 
flat leaves a lot easier to dice up. I can a better man than me would tell you the difference because I have no idea. Um, I tend to always pick flat leaf because it's easier. I think in this country, it's easier to grow mm. curly, but I, again, that could be utter bollocks. Um, <laughs> so, so that's our sauce for our, our, you our rum. You that, by the way. It smells amazing. No, you have to eat it. I know, but okay. it's, it smells amazing. <laughs> I'm just going to be... Yeah, start, start cooking, sure they said. It'll be great. Whole producer now with an on-screen talent. Oh. No, but you need to smell it to... Oh, that does smell good. I'm just feeling in case I drop it everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm not eating another one. <laughs> okay, so that's our sauce for our room. Um... That being said, we are on to our rump. Yes. Wow. Somebody's had a comment about the whale sneeze. What? So, Tommy Docker to say that when the water comes out of the blowhole, that's a whale sneeze. Yeah. Giggly. <laughs> Can't say blowhole and not have a giggle. So, again, <laughs> just patting that dry. Now, we're going to do very little to this beef prior to cooking because with this form of cooking, um, your seasoning goes on after it. You're maintaining your. Um... Do you need that blender again? Probably not, no. So, what I am going to do is put a cast iron skillet on. Is that now cooking you've got there? Yes, because, yes. Oh, Mr. Connell, if you're watching, the bleeping menace has gone. Um, so, we're going to get this up and we're going to get scalding hot. Hi. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about cooking methods. Majority of, of good steaks, and when I say good steaks, um, I'm talking about that, you know, some loin, strip, loin, strip loin, um, fillets, ribeyes, you want to cook them hot and fast. Mm -hmm. um, the lesser cuts, you either need to cook them hot and fast, or you just even need to go away for a long time. The best way to do that is with cast iron. Um, a cast iron will take a lot of heat, and it'll hold a lot of heat. If you've got a thin aluminium pan, you might get that first sear, but that sucked all the heat out of your pan, and your pan needs to repower again. So when you flip it over, if you're ever cooking chicken or beef or whatever, and you start to see it's sort of bubbling liquids at the outside, it's because your pan's not hot enough, but you're actually doing steaming and roasting. Mm -hmm. You're not getting that mayhem reaction. Okay, okay. Any more questions or comments? No, but that camera is not with us any longer. It's not working at all? No. Okay. I cool. think people may think we're glitching because I keep touching that button. Okay, so we'll just uh, we'll just not use that anymore today. So we're going to get that nice and hot. Um, nothing? It's fine. So, rump, the rump. Yes. The rump. Um, or the Pope's eye. Where does that live and how do we get it? It is on the, it's at the top of the back leg. There's the muscle surrounding the hip or the, the H bone. Um, and it's, it's made up of three different muscle groups which form the whole pop's eye. Mm -hmm. And the D-rump being one of them. The other two is the pecana, which I know you're a fan of. Yes. And also the, the tri-tip as well. Right, cool. so we've got, we've got a question. So Laura Gallagher said... Do you have a recipe book that I can get sent with my next donor's delivery? Um, yes, we have a few. We've done a recipe book, or we've done a, a Pirate King kitchen book for um, a Christmas time. It was actually with the money, all the profits from it went to charity. Um, so I think we still have a few copies. So if you leave your details in the comments below, um, actually, perfect opportunity. Put the put the put the, the shop thing up. I get excited. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so basically there's a little ear there with some silver skin on. The presentation of this got Japanese is very precise. So I've just basically squared that off in a nice uh, block of rump and I'm now going to get into a scotch your hot pan. You can see the smoke starting to come off it. Yeah, there we go. Special effects and everything. We'll be lasers <laughs> next week. Um, steak weight. 
So what I'm going to do is just keep it flat on the heat so we get even browning um, across it. And we're only going to give that maybe 30 seconds on each side mm -hmm. and on all the corners and then let it rest. Magic. Yeah. Right, Tommy Dolph is the same. With regards to the rubs available at Donald's, Donald, they are a must try. I reside in Holland and this shit isn't available here. But Kevin Daniel recently sent me all the cases of all available and they are absolutely delicious. Okay. As I said, I would love them against the one you I've just you kinda get it the habit. Aye. Maybe if somebody gave Everybody's me some testers, I might be more inclined to use them. Do you know what one that's not amazing? It was the Christmas one. Aye. With the yeah. Okay, so can we see the colour we've got on that just from 30, 30 seconds of cooking? Imagine. How far down into the, the meat it's actually going. So we're just going to do exactly the same on that side. So while that's the accompaniment we're going to serve with that, Kevin, as you know, the traditional accompaniment is um, some pickled vegetables. Yeah. yeah. So Aye. Tracy pickled these earlier, and the way she done it is she said, Peter, Pickle some vegetables. <laughs> so what we've got in here yeah, is okay. some spring onion, some cucumber, a little bit of red pepper, um, some apple cider vinegar, uh, whole pepper corn, mustard seed, just a, a general pickling mix and some honey as opposed to brown sugar. I still need to I'm allergic to mustard. Are you? No. Good. <laughs> I've got to say, not a shoe. <laughs> You'll not be eating this. Okay, so we now have a required colour mm. on the bottom. Again, what we're doing there is just basically re-oiling our pan. Just keep my... I love the fact that I can now pick this up without going bleating. Um, and we're going to do the same thing on the edges. Don't need that anymore. Madeline Bruce, you can I order the rest of the book? I'm sure we can sort that out. Yep. I take it I'll be I'll be taking over. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't do delivery. We have a literally two or three. This is something I can't do in my house is cook steak like this. Why? The smoke alarms are so sensitive. Um, so the beeping that you were talking shower, about. Your shower cap and elastic band. And it's usually the, the dishcloth try to knock it off the yeah. ceiling. Put a shower cap around it and last it band and cook your steak, open the window. Yeah. Not endorsed by insurance companies. <laughs> or shut your kitchen door. Well, there's a smoke alarm and a heat sensor in my kitchen, so if one doesn't get it, the other one does, then You'll it sets them all up. <laughs> it's a hammer. Oh, you forget about it until it's on and cooking, and then all of them go. It triggers every alarm in the house. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy cooking. I'm quite. No, no. I don't think you're like contractually obliged just to eat meat if you're a butcher. I think you're, no, yeah. you're allowed to squirrel a bit of fish or something. It's part of the thing. Is it a, a, a secret society? Aye. Yeah, there's not an awful lot I won't eat. Pig fish! <laughs> Chicken fish! No, I didn't at all. It's got one thing that I can't eat. I'm not a lot of steak. Oh, I do. I know, just don't talk to me. I know that's going to be disaster. Give me a bit of lamb. Aye. And I'll eat lamb. That's something I don't get an awful lot, because Danielle doesn't like lamb. Um, she doesn't like the smell of lamb cooking either. So it's something that I rarely get. I wee roll and jig it chop sometimes in the shop for my breakfast. Cheeky. <laughs> so those of you who don't have asbestos fingers, um, you could probably use tongs for this bit. So did you season that? Nope, not at all. Because the sauce that we've got and the pickle and what we're going to do to it next, okay. it's where the seasoning will come in. Okay, so we've got our colour all the way around. Now, if you want to put back your hand on that, that's not hot. That's no, not. 
of trust exercise <laughs> there, fail miserably. Um, so all we're basically doing is sealing that outside because what we don't want to do is we don't want to take it above that 53 degrees and put it into that danger zone. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're still in Carpaccio country at the moment. Again, as soon as you get off the heat, if you were, if I was serving this later in the day, I would do this earlier. Well, that kind of works out if you're doing it later in the day. I then bang it in the fridge. Um, it does benefit from that. So put a little pickled vegetable there. Um, you want to play, we've got a bumper. Oh, that was tidy up. Chinese is still cooking, but no, no so fancy is that. What we're going to do now is we'll take a board I'm from a great height. I say great height. Oh, I'll put it in a hole. Plenty of black pepper. What's that, Jim? Carbon salt. Okay. And we are going to take some. That's it, Sesame seeds. <laughs> I think we'll go back to our, our beef block. You don't have yourself a fork, do you? What's that? that it's a little bit of honey. Is that not the honey that you need to No, I've got, I've got proper honey. So we're just basically going to massage that honey in there. Put it onto our board so it's picking up all our stuff. So it's probably about a oh. teaspoon just under the teaspoon of on, <laughs> on each side. And as it hits a slightly warm meat, it'll soften up. Okay, great. Make sure you get your sides. And then just start to pick up all your flavours off the board. Making sure you maintain your Sides. So, how long have you been a butcher? Uh, nearly 18 years. 18 years in September. Well, I've worked there for 18 years. I don't know how long I've been a butcher. <laughs> uh, but, hi, I love it. I enjoy it. Good stuff. So, I believe, well, is it Danielle's family? Uh... Yes. I was just going to ask that question. It was um, Danielle's uncle. Okay. Who owned the business? He worked for Alec Donald and then became a, a partner in the business. Okay. Um, and when Mr. Donald passed away, Marshall took over completely. I think that was the early 80s. Right. Um, and then Daniel basically grew up in the shop. So, But you guys have made some massive changes to the shop. Yeah, yeah. Um, completely refitted it, rebranded, um, and kind of pushing forward with some expansion, hopefully. Cool. With Anything you can share as an exclusive? A wee bit. Um, we're almost there with negotiations for shop number two. Fantastic. Um, but as yet, we're not disclosing a the location. location. Well, that'd, that'd be fantastic. Been inundated with messages. Where is it? Where is it? Just tell me. I'll not tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. I won't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so there we have. We've got some of our... our um, Pickled vegetables there. We just dried the excess pickle. That's more a presentation thing than a flavour thing. Um, I do need to get. Um, What's most popular? Most popular. <sighs> Sirloin and ribeye have always been really, really popular. Fillet always sells out. Just about every week we'll, we'll sell out a fillet. Um, Sirloin and rabai, between the three of them, but cuts like the, the flat iron, some of the kind of cheaper, lesser known cuts um, are becoming quite prominent. I don't know if that's got anything to do with the fact that folk have got more time in the house this last year that they can experiment with different things. And, and stuff. Well, there's um, lots of people watching this channel and it's the type of meat I'm cooking well, with, Kevin. I, we could, could, we could that, say that, couldn't I, we, Kevin? I better have plenty of flat iron ready for next weekend. So... Japanese carving knife, 
it only has an edge on one side, one flat side, right. one thingy. So I could still cut my sailor at me bother. Oh no, this this is basically like a foot and a half razor. Yeah, you better move in a shot. It's like you baby steel. <laughs> it's like a steel only smaller. <laughs> so again, with with any meat, you cut across the grain when you want to eat it because mm. you want your teeth to be biting through the little muscle groups, uh -huh. not the big long stringy ones. So we're basically just going to take the edge off of this. I'm actually going to do it with this knife so we can get a better shot of it. So cutting at a fairly sharp angle. And we want it nice and thin. Wonder about it. I'm used to doing this the other way around. Right, so ideally we want a nice Thin. This went so silent as you concentrate. I know, it's like concentration. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Just think, what, what a change this is from a Saturday lunch normally for rolls and sausage. <laughs> I think we we'll take you finish, you'll probably have eaten just as much meat. Sure. Okay, so that's kind of your portion size. We'll have all that later. later. And then we're going to go back to our so sauce. Come on. <laughs> I'm sitting on my hands. <laughs> I bet you like it burnt. Yeah, burnt. No, well, I don't like it burnt. I used to have it really, really well done. Uh -huh. But I am now kind of going on that medium Aye. stage. That medium to burnt? Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't eat it with. No. That's it. I didn't used to like steak because I was a lazy eater. So when it was well cooked and you had to chew it a lot, I just I wasn't interested in it. And. Um, I was going out one night, my mum was making steak. I said, You're going to need to give me it just now because I need to go. And it was pink, and I was like, Oh, that's much better than my mum burns everything anyway. Sorry, Francis, but you you do. Um, I mean, it does, it definitely does have a lovely texture when it's not so burnt. Uh -huh. okay, I, 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 I have graduated from very well done uh -huh. to medium to well done. Quite a lot one, you're in the babish. Mm -hmm. And it is a completely different. Aye. Well, it retains some of the natural juice and the all the flavour when you're having a, a steak well done to that degree. You're you're cooking everything out of it. Yeah. Okay, so that's our beef tataki. Um, our dipping sauce is coriander, parsley. Oh, I have missed something. So I was just about to say coriander, parsley, and lime. So again, the lime brings a little bit of sour. Um, and just use a little bit of the zest just to season the like a patch here. Um, so we can get Kevin munching on this. Yeah, that's um, ready. There you go, chef. Before. Enjoy that. You can use the... Thank you. Oh, nearly fell off my seat. I'm going to get you to move your glass. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to like, move it miles away. You can move it to where the pickles are. Right. So again, you eat away and I'll run through the dish so we can still be on the audio. So that's a um, seared uh, de-rump um, with some pickled vegetables and our dipping sauce, which is coriander, parsley, um, garlic, ginger. Um, and then our aromatics are in there, our fish sauce, uh, Chinese wine, um, and some honey. You're going to need to write that because I'm lost in that. This is well, the recipe might be available in our second book, <laughs> Kevin. So how is that? Mm. Lovely. 
are so good. The line definitely brings other kind of notes out. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it's that the, the Japanese, especially Asian cultures, are very good at that. A little bit salt, a little bit sweet, a little bit sour, mm -hmm. a little bit of heat. You know, it's, it's hitting all those areas on your, your tongue, Gregory. Mm -hmm. Tracy's pickled vegetables are amazing. So we'll leave you munching away. I have currently got a griddle pan on now, which I'm going to use as our uh, alternative <laughs> to... Francis McMillan said, my mouth is watering watching you eat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to use a griddle pan as an alternative for our uh, barbecue alternative. Um, by all means, fire up the grill. Actually, when we do next week's show with Karen, um, I'm not going to be using the traditional hot, plat, hot plate, I'm going to use the, the little eggs, so there will be more barbecue based recipes where we'll get into making your own rubs and that kind of thing. So that's, have you ever, have you ever had meat cooked that way before? Not not just sealed like that. Uh -huh. um, I've had carpaccio and things yeah. like that, and a vet rare steak, but not not cooked like that and served like that this way. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, your, your meat's there. Your meat's almost a supporting flavour, if you mm -hmm. like. To your, it's your your seasonings coming from your pickles and your your sauce. That just oh, nice. so good. There's something. I'll just get a wee burst of heat for something there. A wee nippy tongue. <laughs> maybe maybe um, <laughs> a wee a wee bit of chili in the pickle vegetable. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'll just you keep munching away. Come on to the big I'm going to, don't worry. <laughs> um. <laughs> We're going to start with this. So our accompaniment to this, if you like, um, is going to be like a, an Asian type of slaw. Um, so basically what I've got in the bowl, kales if we're on overhead, um, just some Chinese cabbage, um, some red onion, and some little red peppers. Gotta Gallagher ask what cut of meat you use for what kims is my life. That's a uh, D-rump or Pope's your eye. money, Pope's eye. Um, if you go to if you go to Donald the Butcher and say, "Can I get some of that de rump?" I love the rump. <laughs> um, that was on Pirate Ten Kitchen. Then he'll know what you mean, and then I can get a bigger discount when I go in because I'm selling shit in a shop. Mm -hmm. So to this, um, apple cider vinegar, garlic, ginger, black pepper. Again, these are all summery flavors. Um, what I did do with the cabbage is, so before we started, good salting, and then squeeze and crunch. I've done, you've seen me making slaw on here before, squeeze and crunch, because what that does, starts to break down the tougher fibres on the cabbage and gives you that um, cold, slowy texture to it. So you're getting that on overhead. Perfect. Um, I'll just go get my hands a quick. No, uh, my toe. Right, so I think that's hot enough. So we're going to just drop our marinated uh, steak in there. Would you marinate that for a wee bit longer? Would you say, like no, because it's not. It's not really a marinade. It's more of a dry rub. So you, you could, but I think we kind of gave it <coughs> 15, 20 minutes, half an hour probably. Um, you could stick it in the fridge overnight. Um, the thing about this recipe, because we're using a thin cut of meat and we put the scores in it, that's an example of how you can cook a barbecue type dish or get your barbecue going. So if you come in from work, you get this sitting in the fridge, bought it from Don's Butchers, you can go out, light your barbecue, cover your steak, by the time your barbecue is hot enough to cook on, this is hot enough to be cooked on it. So, um, yeah, if you were doing traditional barbecue, you'd be... Maybe if it was beef, you may be sitting to uh, marinate it or rub, leave the rub on it for two or three hours or overnight or whatever. Okay, okay and have that later on as well. So our, our sous vide, for those of you who are just joining us, our sous vide's been in now, how long has the show been running? 45 minutes. So our sous vide's probably been in there 45 minutes now. Timing's fine. We'll let that do its thing. That can go in the sink. So, out with the, the old butchery thing. 
Yes, I'm going to make you talk your mouth off. Out with the old butchery <coughs> thing. Um, do you agree? <laughs> um, what do you do for fun? What's what is that? What's the butcher do when he's not butchering? He runs about after the three kids. So Brady, Archer, and Noah. Um, so they're six, four, and two. So pretty full on. <laughs> Running about picking them up. That's more a workout regime than a Aye. hobby. Yeah, but other than that, I enjoy I enjoy cooking myself as well. Um, and right now, other than that, it's working, home running about after the kids, cooking, and my beloved housework. Yeah. So you talk a little bit work, and I know how much a workaholic you are. You guys pretty much remained open for most of lockdown and put some things in place for that, so you could remain open yeah. and your customers well, stay safe. We didn't remain open. What we done, we closed the doors to the shop, because at that point, with what was being shown in the telly, nobody knew what kind of beast we were dealing with. So in order for us to protect the staff, Daniel decided to close the doors, and right. we would do delivery only, which we've always done deliveries for mm -hmm. forever. Um, and we went from doing maybe 10 or 15 a week to at the peak we were doing 150 a day wow so we had to get another van in we had to, to properly cap orders and, and order times and cut off times and things like that um, and we basically we done that in a day we took a day to take stock of everything and, and figure out what we were going to do and how we do it and then the next day it was just we were off and running fantastic so and obviously a lot of, a lot of grateful people around about the yeah. scenario yeah. well we're doing Odo, Uddingston, Belsall, Motherwell, Hamilton, basically anybody that that needed us, we were, we were there kind of thing. And we're constantly expanding um, that delivery range now, so we're going anywhere from Lark Hall, the back end of Airdrie, out to Newton Mearns, uh, Glasgow City Centre, Ibrox Coven, anything in between. Wow. wow. So it's... Go on. Aye, it's pretty crazy at times. Have you always done delivery things like that? Yeah, deliveries have always been something that we do. Uh -huh. It's been more more prominent and more yeah. kind of widespread kind of thing. So, yeah, I think at, at the time we were so busy because the supermarkets couldn't keep up with the demand. Yeah. Everybody's seen the, the panic buying and the supermarkets don't have anything, but it wasn't a case that they didn't actually have the stock. They just couldn't get it distributed. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the they kind of fell down on it. Lorry drivers can only drive for so long at a time, kind of thing. Um, so we kind of plug that gap, kind of thing. Okay, so. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this has been probably our highest jiggity episode of uh, some sort of Definitely. record in there. I'm um, behaving myself as well. Hmm? I'm behaving myself. I know. You're on. Best behaviour, nearly. 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 So, um, well, we've got you here. Um, there was also, we, we, we kind of plugging the Donald's Butchery Academy. Yes. You want to you wanna tell us a little bit about that? It's something that we, we kind of had the idea when we were renovating the shop of doing classes. So bringing people who are interested in what butchers do. in social distance and we can't do that um, so we've had the idea we've spoke about it with yourself obviously is offering them as an online option where you can do it in the comfort of your own home mm -hmm. backed by videos with me demonstrating explaining and guiding you through how to do it so I know we had a couple of dates set up there was a few things um, happened over the last month or so the life um, got in the way Aye, aye. Um, 
So we'll get them filmed and get everything ready to go and, and go on. I think it's going to be a long time before we'll be allowed to actually do the classes in the shop yeah. and have people people there. So okay. okay, so to get to get us moving along, I can see this on one side, bottom side's coming along nice, but I'm just gonna pop this in the oven. Um not for too long. I say it's not going to, we're not roasting or anything like that. It'll just keep that, um, because it's a pizza oven, it'll keep that pan fine. Let's just move on to something else. Um, so, we're going to do the fillet now. Um, so, fillet, as we said earlier, a lot less fat on it as a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. um, Needs to be cooked with a little bit more respect. We're just going to use a, um, let's call it a skillet. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use a cast iron skillet again, a little bit of oil in there. Make sure it's actually heating up. Um, so this is... Don't worry, I'm not cooking all of this. Uh, this is pretty much... Mm, the end of the middle heading towards the tail. No. You're all the way other, around? You're at the other side there. Okay. <laughs> right. This is you... This, this piece here, right? As you're moving up into the Chateau Back, okay, okay. Um, so what I would say to people who, who get a, a full fillet or buy a larger piece of fillet, wrap it in cling film, wrap it really tight so you get that nice shape. Because mm -hmm. when you cook it, it'll cook evenly top and bottom, then you can cook the sides. Whereas if you let it, it's going to take its natural form, and it'll kind of slope to one side. And, uh -huh. um, it's not, not so good. It also allows you to maybe go a bit thicker. You can put cling film in a pan. Cling film, you can cook up to 280 odd degrees. Um, it's not going to do anything mm -hmm. um, wrong, anything bad to your, to your meat. You don't want your meat being sullied. Um, so, what we are going to do today is we're probably going to take a normal size fillet, not a Murphy size one, off of this. Now, the reason I want you to cook this, Kevin, is not as much. For the cooking of the fillet. Um, what I want to show is people how to do a quick pan. To me, I don't like fillets. I don't think there's a great amount of flavour in them. I think it's a nice texture. Uh -huh. I don't think it's a very flavourful meat. Um, so again, plenty of seasoning. Uh, and I want to show people how to do a quick pan sauce. And we're going to use um, some pork. We're going to use some of our Bernese butter um, to mount the sauce. Okay, great. Um, and some some mushrooms and some garlic. It's almost like in a Rossini S. It's yeah, I don't even know if there's a name for it. So got a little bit of avocado oil in there. Should be nice and hot. And again, we're just going to put that in a nice hot pan. Doesn't need to be as region hot mm -hmm. um, as a uh, for the dirham. Because the, the D-Rump um, needs to be a more kind of constant heat. Because what you want to do is you want to see that. I don't know if you can get a shot of that. Can you see the cook ring? Can't see much of it at the moment. But you'll start to see the cook ring come up. Mm -hmm. um, and again, from a temperature point of view, medium rare, we want to be hitting somewhere around about 50, 60, 60 degrees. It's quite a thick steak. So when you put your temperature in or your probe in, See people that go, you can tell by doing this and doing that. Bollocks, use a probe. Hey. Take your probe in, get a temperature. Probes don't lie. Um, we want to make sure it's at that nice pink in the middle, blushing in the middle. That's why there's another bit over there, which after the show is finished, I will cook the fuck out of. <laughs> um, and we will go about our business. So we're just going to leave that cooking away. We can start to see... We go on overhead, kills. Start to see the cook ring yeah. starting to creep up there. Put that back in the pan. So what we're going to do is get a seal on both sides of this, and then we're going to finish it off in the oven, because it is, it is a little mm -hmm. bit thicker. If you put too much hard heat on it, you're just going to keep drying it out and drying it out, because it doesn't have yeah. that intercostal fat. Angela said, is it a taste from the avocado oil? No, that's why we use it. It's, um, Mark Ferguson's our in-house expert on these things. Uh, avocado oil, it's a very high smoke point, so you can get the, the oil hot enough to sear, uh -huh. but it is neutral flavoured, so you, you're not getting that 
all olive oil to tender. People cooking olive oil, and it's good for cooking at low temperature, sauces and whatnot, frying in it, or searing in it. Don't do it. Horrible. And horrible doesn't idea. like the taste of oil. That's Daniel's mum. Um, well, what you do is get yourself a good cast iron pan, get some beef tallow from your mm. local butcher, season your pan well, and then you shouldn't need any oil. The reason I've got a little bit of oil in here is because I'm going to use it for the sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, right, moving on, moving on. So, we have a, um, what do we have? A flat iron's in the oven, it's, it's finishing off. You've had your sataki, we're doing a fillet. Once that fillet is ready for turning, which is round right about now, we've got some good colour on that. It's got a nice flat um, crust on it, so you're going to get that. You start to seal in all your flavours. We'll do it about another minute, two minutes on that side. Roll it around the outside. We'll put it in a, a dish. Put it in the oven to finish. Um, a sous vide steak. We're going to give that another five minutes. Um, and then I'll crank the, the, the water temperature up. Yep. And get the get the asparagus on. I'm just, just kind of getting both perspectives of it of knowing like where the meat is coming from and told and then it. put to do it after <laughs> and the best way I think a lot of people would go in and ask for something that they, they just don't know how to yeah. well, that, you know that's why we're there but yeah. part of your job in the shop is uh -huh. to find out what people are doing with it and say well that's maybe not quite right mm -hmm. for, for what you're planning uh -huh. And as I mean, it's one of these things where you see your, your most popular foots are still loins and ribeyes. Mm. People know that. Aye. Special occasion we fill it. You know, daddy's birthday, a keyboard or a, a, a tomahawk. Uh -huh. um, but I think, I'm not saying with this channel, but I'm thinking more the mainstream television shows. When we see things like beef shin and hanger steak and flat iron, it's making people a bit more adventurous because they now know what to do with that uh -huh. bit of meat. You know, because... Uh, as far as uh, barbecues and that kind of thing go, you know, it was chicken drumsticks, sausage and hamburgers because Aye. people were comfortable with that. Now people are jumping about with, you know, duck wings and we'll have a wee, uh, <laughs> we'll have a wee kebab and we'll get this going and we'll have a brisket on and, you know, and the fact that what we call barbecuing in this country is not barbecuing, it's grilling. Well, um, we don't, we've never had a barbecue that's been like... Yeah. Or or like. So, seared, pop in the oven. Yeah, we don't, we, we do barbecues, we don't do uh -huh. grill barbecues. No, I mean, if people burn things, they burn things. Um, so, what I'm going to do is find a towel. Right there. This one. Um, so basically, a flat iron's done, nice and piping hot, put that down there. Kayla, you want to pan to that so we can... Um, so you can't get the sound on that? Oh, it sounds on this? No, it's not been going to... That's strange because the sound should follow. No, it doesn't. So we're just going to put some lime on that while it's resting. A big lover of wine. You may have noticed that. Okay. Cool. Um, it doesn't. The sound doesn't. Doesn't seem to be coming through. Yes, yeah, so the sound should come through a big camera if it's on the HDMI one. Anyway, um, so this pan has all our goodness in it from our two steaks and the villa. Uh -huh. So we're going to deglaze it, which is a French culinary term. <laughs> Some port to the heat in that pan should reduce that down really quickly and get it nice and sticky. And it should also lift all those bits of beefy goodness out of there. Um, we are also to that, we are going to add about a teaspoon of I know I'm putting about a teaspoon in. <laughs> I think you'll be banned from any future presentations. So we'll a uh, little bit of garlic in there. You see how that's kind of reduced down? Aye. You know. 
And again, we're just mixing all that goodness in there. We have, again, pan sauces is all about being quick, so we'll get some, make sure you got all your mise en fire down first. Some uh, thinly sliced chestnut mushrooms. Just move them about, get them all coated in the goodness. Now, if I was doing a pan sauce, I'd have a wee shallot on standby. But my mate's got this butcher shop that sells these great compound butters. So we're just going to take a little bit of our Bernese, which we said before, we've got our dill, tarragon, mm -hmm. shallot. It's already loaded for you, isn't it? It's already in there. So we're just going to mount that sauce. Giggly, and that's actually the word for it. It's called <laughs> mounting it with butter. So we're not going to stir it. I suppose, she, it, I suppose that's good to see people kind of going through the whole evolution of trying to make that themselves. Yeah. You know, it's a great so I'm just going to warm a, um, a little man bread that I've got here for a flat iron. Did you say man bread? Nan bread. I've actually never heard her talk so much in an I know. episode. Chatty you know? Cathy. So we're raging in a minute when I go and uh, get to wash this pan. So you're getting that port and that, you're getting all those Bernese notes, but you're also getting that porty wine, mushroomy uh -huh. goodness. So I'm just going to go and grab a fillet back out. Pound a fillet, pound you doing? Trying desperately not to burn myself. Yes, it is possible for me to burn myself. Francis said, Kevin, how good does that smell? It's amazing. So our fillet's in there. We're just going to let that rest. General rule of thumb, however long you cook something, let it rest for half as long. So if you cook it, if you cook a big bit of meat for an hour, or for eight hours of a biscuit, let it rest for an hour. Mm -hmm. Heat ain't going anywhere. Like for a fillet steak, you've kind of cooked it on both sides, maybe six or seven minutes, let it rest for three or four. No, because you, you put a bit of tin foil over it, or if the kitchen's warm, you know, put it, don't put it on the window ledge. Put a bit of tin foil over it, it'll keep the heat in it, per se. But what it's doing is it's letting the muscles relax mm -hmm. and uh, sort of do its, do its relaxing bits and pieces, and all the juices, sort of re, they go away from, because when you put it in the pan, all the juices go, oh, fuck that. <laughs> right? So when you let it rest, it kind of go, oh, okay, so it's fine, it's fine. You know, when you go into like a hot pool, you go, oh, oh, oh. as it gets used to it, it's back. So, what I'm going to do is a little final inner sauce at the last minute, a little bit of thyme, thyme and steak, fresh thyme and steak. Yeah, get over it. Um, and we're going to go <laughs> for the. The Gordon Ramsay plate. Mm. It's not actually Gordon Ramsay. It's the same plate that you, Gordon Ramsay uses in his uh, in his uh, his restaurant. So put a little steak there. That should be nice and almost rested. So then we're going to take our mushrooms over the top. Can't help myself, chefy bit. Um, <laughs> Put that pan like mushroom, eh? over there. That little bit, bit of time in. just kind of fell sexily. No, it was, it was expertly positioned, Kevin. I think you'll find. So, what we'll do is we'll just take that out of there because that's resting away. That's our next dish. Um, and then <laughs> sexy photographs, and then. Um, we'll get you rock and rolling with our next dish. It's like the heat's just left my mouth for the first one. It was quite an afterburn. Well, like I said, you, you're wanting all those pokey flavours when you're, you know. My okay. Okay. Oh, perfect. Bang, bang, bang. So we're going to go back in here. Uh, nan bread. 
he's going to go back to what I'm going to do. I need an art. <laughs> I'm right going to lie down. I've never been fed so well on a Saturday afternoon. So we get comments it's, or questions? Yeah. Or... <laughs> So I know, I know, I know this is her heresy. Can you cut through the middle of that so we can have a look at it for mm -hmm. done this? Fork out the way. So it's on the rear side. Perfect. Um, Tracy wouldn't even be having that. Wouldn't even be in the same room as that. Looks amazing. The flavour, that sauce is so good. So Laura said, what's your favourite cut of beef to cook and eat? Well, you want to go first, then I'll go. Mm. Now you go first because he's eating. Because he's yeah. eating. Um, I'm I'm an old school barbecue guy. I like the time and the effort. We've recently done a whole shin of beef that we got from Kevin. We've done that in the the slow the barbecue, put in about 120 yeah. degrees. It was in there for about six and a half, seven That's hours. Um, beef ribs done on the barbecue again um, are great. They're also great if you get buy twice as much. See what I'm doing, see what I'm doing. <laughs> Cook half of them, have it as barbecue, keep the other half, put it in the freezer. A couple of weeks later, take it out of the freezer, pick all the meat off the bone and make like your ragu sauce. We've done that on this show as well. If you look back at the past episodes and stuff. Um, so I think beef ribs are a fantastic Aye. piece of meat because you get that beefy, that roast beefiness, but you can also have it as a barbecue, rah, 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 Fred Flintstone thing. But you can also break it down because it really does break down Aye. wonderfully and use it in pasta sauces or put it on pizzas or make sausage rolls with it. You know, you can... Uh, beef ribs, there you go. Mm, my favourite would be... I like a roast. I like a, a proper like Sunday roast, so um, a bit of rib of beef on the bone or off the bone. I'm no, I'm no fussy. Um, with all the trimmings, all your roast potatoes, roast carrots, parsnips, Yorkshire puddings, aye, everything. I've only just in maybe in the last six months or so started eating cauliflower. Hated cauliflower. Uh, and now I kind of get enough cauliflower cheese. Literally every time I make dinner, I'll make cauliflower cheese. <laughs> what we having for dinner? Uh, toasties. Cauliflower cheese. <laughs> so while, you, while you're munching away on that, I'm just starting to set up the next, the next one. Um, so hot naan bread. A um, little bit of honey on there. A little bit of lemon zest. Honey and lemon go really well. So you're almost invoking that kind of Peshwani nanness. Francis said a sandwich is not going to cut it now. <laughs> We're then going to take a carve some of our meat off of our uh, flat iron. I'm just going to stack that up on our naan bread. Is that your stomach growling? I <laughs> heard that from just, another I postcode. Not right, Laura Gallagher says, Right, see the barbecue, it's an argument in my house. I like wood burning or charcoal, but my husband wants to buy out gas thing. What is the best? Depends what you want to do. If you want to grill, gas. If you want to barbecue, if you want to cut is that all the good meat this man produces, the best way to do that is either a stick burner, which is a um, offset smokery type thing, or a charcoal grill. What you can do, and we are not sponsored by it, is you can get the best of both worlds. That's a Traeger, which is a pellet grill. So I can get that up to temperature as quickly as a gas grill, and I can make burgers on it, steaks. You know, I can see if it will go up to 400 degrees in American money. But you can also dial it down and use it as a slow smoker. Mm -hmm. That's what we've obviously used for the, the shin of beef. So if people don't have that, would you recommend? So if you're going to go and buy one, I would say have a look at pellet grills. A little bit pricier, but in the long run, um, they are going to give you two pieces of kit 
as you yeah. develop as because you can also put a pizza store in that, crank it up and do pizzas in it. Um there's other makes out there, there's Smoky so Mountain Grills, like Traeger. No. <laughs> that that brings fire to the party, the firing the the, the, the the meat engine brings fire. Okay, seen that, so. Um, so but what do you recommend? So if I would, I would always go fire over gas. Um, can it be about fire? Can it be fire? I've always loved that. If you want, fire. Can, but I appreciate, I appreciate mm. that fire, fires, your know, charcoal barbecues, stick burners, takes a bit of effort, maintenance, lighting them, preparing them. If you get a and they don't have to be beasts like that. They do much smaller ones. Lord, I've got that mounted up there because it fits my setup here. They come on legs. They can wheel them about the same. Take up the same room as a gas barbecue or a charcoal. Um, but I would, I would say, get yourself a pellet grill. I would generally roll that up like that. Yeah, that's a hoagie. That's what I mean. You don't have to eat all of this, Kevin. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> challenge accepted. <laughs> That's like when you go on a night out, like, what, what would you want? That's what you Absolutely. wear on your way home. <laughs> that would be it, definitely. So I know it's not traditional, but I am going to dress that with some of the pickles. No! <laughs> that steak was cooked perfectly, and that sauce, that I think that is... Oh, pan sauce? Yeah, the pan sauce is and there is no the magic nicest to that. sauce that I think I've ever had with steak. You're using, you're using the residue, all the caramelised goody stuff off the... Um, off the pan, a little bit of your Bernese butter mm -hmm. available from Donald's Butchers. Um, I kind of thought the butter. Bernese would have been lost in some of the, the kind of stronger flavours there, but you really get the, the Bernese coming through. So, is that final one, do you? It is. Fair distance. I think you've Sorry, read your own book. I'm not mm. going to address it. Did you just see that? What? Stumbelina. Stumbelina. Did she fly <laughs> in the kitchen again? <laughs> Okie dokie, so I think we are down to the great scientific mm. experiment. So we started off this journey comparing um, or with a view to comparing sous vide against traditional cooking. I'm going to grab my pan. So what right, we're going to do, sure. two cast iron pans, ready to rock and roll. Um, you can give us your thoughts on that while I pull this <laughs> steak out of it. No, I'm not going to eat it all. I won't know. I'll try and not eat it all. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot. Of, but when you go, you dig in, I'll, I'm just going to prep this and Right, so how long has that been in? So Probably about an hour. We're about an hour and 20 minutes in. So I'd say about an hour. Okay. Yeah, we're about an hour in. But that's the good thing about sous vide. You can't go over. You could leave that in there. Because we're under that 70 degree mark, once you get over four hours, you're mm -hmm. pushing it. Yeah. But you're leaving it at that temperature. But that'll hold in that temperature for up to four hours. How is um, it? Yeah. Keen. I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> so what we're going to do we're here... We're going to move in, never mean go back to work. <laughs> oh, I've got something else that beeps. That is definitely one of the kind of... I think that's... See, just seeing that, it's reminded me of going on nights out and going to the... Like, the kebab place across the road and going that right... Oh, if you hold it, it doesn't bleep. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, I dented the camera. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's trying to be discreet and take away the light. Okay, so we'll, we'll put a sous vide machine or a water bath up to 80 odd degrees. I'll take a couple of minutes to do that. I'm just going to throw our asparagus in regardless because it's got more than 10 minutes. How's that working out for you? You keep okay. asking when I've got a mouthful. Giggly. Mm -hmm. From a honeymoon oil again. <laughs> right. The flat iron on its own was unbelievable. It's really that rub that you put on it and really getting the kind of smoky notes. Uh -huh. Delicious. Smoky notes. You've been watching too much of that Saturday kitchen thing. <laughs> right. 
so while you're doing that, I'm going to talk to the lovely people watching at home. So this does not look appetising right now. Um, so we are going to sear this in our pan. Um, that being said, let's turn. That all the time, though. Yes, we should be. But it is a very quick sear. No, you're literally, see the amount of time we had the D-Rum pin? Probably less. You're just wanting some colour. So we're just going to take our herbs out of there. So, but, oh, you sorry. Oh, sorry. Scott Rankin said, Kevin, shop still in one piece, they miss you, and Paul denies begging for a shout out. Mm -hmm. Scott's on holiday this week. And Paul's the one that was begging for a shout out earlier on. <laughs> So you can see there what we talked earlier about the, the fat, but that fat's still hard, that fat's rendered out, and you can start to see the meat opening up where the intercostal fats have. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Is that how you're going to get through all this? How does, how does Danielle put up with that nonsense? She's uh, stopped listening, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no there's no accompaniments, there's no garnish to this, we're just going to be going to get cook two steaks, mm -hmm. put our Bernays butter on the top, cut through them, and then we'll talk about what it looks like inside. Mm. So you're enjoying the, the kebab, so even just the plain kebab, a little bit of honey, mm -hmm. a little bit of lemon juice. Aye. Again, it's all about those layers of flavour, building the layers up. How are you today? So for the fine, thank you. ladies and gentlemen at home, if we start, if you look at the, the, the first, the, the un sous vide steak, you see the peppers all sitting there, but that heavy coat of salt virtually oh. disappeared. Uh -huh. So that's all sucked into the meat. The pans are starting to get a little bit smoky. Again, a little bit of avocado oil. Um, I am going to cook this one first, because obviously that's going to take seconds. So we need to cook this, let it rest, and so bring it up to speed. So you've done like a comparison of what yes. it looks like right So again, we're ready for the... Wait. So good sizzle. It's the best noise in the world, that, isn't it? And we are going to... I'm a big fan of using the steak presses because it keeps your, your meat from... Mm. You know, which ends up with that burnt bit in the middle and the two kind of... There's a wee bit of childish giggle in there from the talk about your meat turning up mm -hmm. at the end. So, um, Pirate King Kitchen stuff. We are charging towards the end of season two. Um, as I said, we got uh, Cam Pointing on next week. Um, I think we're going to do some. It's kind of a, a, a. I don't know about the moral side of doing this, but we're going to do some tandoori pork. No, we're going to do we're going to do like a, a piri piri Nando's style pork chop. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do some Korean beef ribs. And so you want to know what they are. We'll talk about beef ribs earlier. And we'll be doing them next week. And then we've got Billy on the week after. I have no idea what I'm going to do for Billy. I think I'm going to do Billy's some. A bit crazy. No, I'm going to do some Thai fried chicken. Um, so if you want to know what Thai fried chicken is, turn in a couple of weeks um, and you'll find out. The I don't know why. Well, you don't know what Thai fried chicken is. <laughs> Boo is we'll have metal tubes firing hot oil across the kitchen, and then we'll both be either sides of it with tennis rackets chicken. batting a chicken thigh through it. <laughs> that could be Thai fried. It's not. That's not Thai fried. Um, How many people are going to try that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> on your own head, be it. Um, it's crazy enough, so... Genuinely wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> yeah, no, they have. Um, so, what's your plans for the rest of today? Uh, back to work. I'm going to go back to work. So, when. Um, have a wee nap. <laughs> <laughs> when the, the shop was closed, when we were doing deliveries only, we were getting early finishes. Some mm -hmm. days when we, were, when we were ahead. So, we kind of quite like that so we've adjusted our opening hours and our working hours kind of thing so uh -huh. we're now late night on a Thursday so it's two staff stay behind to seven o'clock on a Thursday and then they two then finish early on the Saturday Good. so Paul it's his week to finish at three o'clock 
and keep a lot of people in this week. Mm-hmm. So, is that how I want to shout out? Yeah. Aye. Well, Aye. I want to shout out just because you're never, because Kevin's going for that. <laughs> so, so, back to cover that. Just to match up our flavour profiles, we've got a couple of um, cloves of garlic. I'm not doing anything particularly fancy with them. Just giving them a squish. We're just going to throw them in the, the oil in their pans. You basically just put a steak to one end, a little bit more oil at that end. We're just going to use that oil base over. Normally we throw a, a knob of butter in there, but since we're going to use our finishing butter, mm-hmm. I don't want to over overpower butter. that. Now, this is probably a silly question. So do you offer like a certain shots in the shop then I'm guessing? And they do the yeah. kind of cross station thing. Yeah. Oh, quick thing. Sorry to interrupt you, Kayleigh. Okay. Um, that should have had crispy onions on top of it. Mm. Uh, we have to do that. Uh, yeah, we do. So, obviously, I started as an apprentice, but the the whole kind of training side that we all have just done in the shop as you were working kind of thing, mm. uh, we now work quite closely with Scottish Meat Training, who are backed by the... Um, Scottish Staff Butchers, the, the Butchers Federation, so they come in and assess uh, everything that we're doing. So right now we've got Nathan in as our apprentice, so he's doing all his training. We had an assessment the other day. Um, Paul as well has been through the next level of his. Um, Paul and Scott are on to level three. So how long Nathan, do you do that take then? Doing the, the actual course, you get two years to do that. Yeah. Um, but in terms of learning, I'm 18 years in and Every day is a field, I think. Yeah. If you get to a point where you close yourself off to learning anything, you're learning a new way of doing anything, then what's the point? Yeah. I don't really believe that you get to a point where you know everything because yeah. somebody's always going to show you something that you don't know. Um, so we've got Paul and Scott on level three. Okay. Nathan's doing his level two of um, Butchie. Uh, I can't remember the name. I mean, went blank. And we've got Samantha doing her customer service um, level mm-hmm. two as well. I've only just finished mine last year. I completed my diploma in October. No, so I would never expect them to do something that I've not done or they're not doing. So I don't know the, the stuff all the way along. Maybe just ahead of them, just so that I can, if they get to a point where they're not sure about anything, I've, I've done it. So um, I can kind of go back and help them. Okay, so we're just going to take uh, ribeye. Finish off in the oven, and again, okay, I'll I'll do it properly. I'm telling people not to do this at home, and I'm doing it. Check the internal temperature of your ribeye. So that is sitting there. Uh, at about thirty degrees. I want that to come up to round about fifty, and as it rests. Um, I'll bring the rest of it out, so that'll come up fairly quickly. Please get Kevin to do the Korean barbecue ribs and shop after your next your show next week. So the Korean barbecue ribs are, um, so that you get to this, Korean barbecue ribs. You start off with the block rib, you slice about quarter inch up, and then you keep butterflying out. So you end up, you put all your rub on it, cook it over, over fire, and then you wrap it up back around the bone. There's an LA, LA rib, which is basically we cut the ribs really finely. Mm-hmm. So you end up, it almost looks like the grill of a car over the headlights yeah. in it, you know, with it, it slices of meat across it, and then you do them over the grill. Um, so there's, there's two different ways of, uh, I think from a, a restaurant point of view, the LA cut's easier, so that mm-hmm. tends to get cold Korean with the traditional ones to take the short ribbon, so almost like fill it out or butterfly it out. So we've got our pan nice and hot. Yeah, I'm not going to be greedy. He's I'm not, a bit warm. Uh, no, I'm not how warm. Try not to eat that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've got a, a, a pan. I'm trying my best not to eat it. Roasting hot. <laughs> our steak is cooked to 55 degrees in the middle. 55 degrees. Much Thank more you. aggressive pan because we don't want to spend a lot of time in there, because you don't want that. You get your sear, and then you mm-hmm. get that grey cook line, and then right. your meat. Theoretically, your meat should be all pink all the way through the sous vide. So the sear um, is purely just to get 
some color on it. Best way to get color on it. Oh, fire. That's us rendered that fat. Quick turnover. If you don't have a cycle torch or a fire hammer, um, under your grill or on a roasting hot pan. I could actually see Terry, but like, thinking you said, it would I get on it? Nah, I won't be allowed on. Definitely not. <laughs> would I can of do them in the lighter work? No. You wouldn't get the pressure. You wouldn't get the temperature, mate. Uh, but again, you just been wanting that as sealed as possible, and again, same trick with the garlic. <clears throat> Basically, creating a wee garlic oil, maybe a pan about two. And the other pan obviously had the thyme and the garlic, but obviously we sous vide this. That's the thyme on it. Yeah. So I'm quite happy with that. I want to take it off the heat. We have a cool pan. That's done, that's resting. So a little bit of a tidy up before we. As a wise man in a red suit once said, before we went to the end game, no, it wasn't Santa. So we're just going to prep our, our butter. But that's, that's Bernese butter, it's brilliant. I'm a big fan of the truffle butter as well. Oh, so. yeah. um, I think that was the nicest one on that steak. The chimichurri one's really nice. I had that in my steak last, I made steak the other night, I can't remember what night it was, and I put the, the chimichurri on it, it was a nice wee kick to that, it's not uh -huh. too overpowering. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm still trying to wonder why that, that audio's not following, because the, audio, the audio should follow that, or shouldn't follow to that camera, it should stay on that one. Is that right? This camera's sad because that's the shot. We try switching back on, see if it comes back yeah, on. Yeah, it does not work. Have I broke it? No. <laughs> I just probably don't know how to work it off. Five minutes. So play the, play, 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 play the shop trailer. Oh, amazing. So good. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, stay calm. Right, so let's see where we're at with our um, sous vide adventures. I think the key word here is hot as fuck. <laughs> And some, and some yeah, so I want that. So that one can go over there. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a so this is a sous vide steak. Let that one rest for the time being. So I'm just gonna cut this through the middle. And if we look on that, have you got the babish on this? Yes. So we can see what we spoke about. There's no, remember there's no sound. Yeah, yeah back up to the main camp. Yeah. 
or the overhead actually. So that's perfectly medium rare. And there's no blood leaking mm -hmm. out of that. All the juice is still there. All your fat starts to render. So we will put some of that on a plate for you. Try to avoid my greasy fingerprints. That fat is just all kinds of delicious. Our finishing butter. Do you want a couple of quick yeah. photographs of that and then we'll get Kevin can have his 75th steak of the day. <laughs> He's going to retire and become a fireman after today. The difference between sous and. Yeah, traditional cooking methods. Okay, you want to jump in and give us your thoughts on your yes. first uh, sous vide steak? Can't even pick my knife up. <laughs> May even get you a... I'll sneak on your side dish while you're not looking. It just cuts the bar. <laughs> and again, that's your asparagus cooked in there. Oh, it's tremendous. Okay. Well, that makes good. Yeah, I'm, I love it. So, for your first sous vide steak, the best sous vide steak I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's definitely so a difference. You, is that textural? There's, I, it's not like eating steak. For, that sounds weird because I'm eating steak and I'm saying it doesn't feel like I'm eating steak. It's, I don't know, it's a strange difference in the texture because in your head you've got, I'm about to eat a bit of steak, but it, it literally just melts, falls apart. So it means you get, you get that tenderness from a, mm -hmm. um, like you wouldn't maybe get from. We are traditionally cooked. Well, we'll try to traditionally cook mm. one in a minute. But what beef was that and the water? That was a uh, ribeye. So ribeye is a great example of doing it because the things that sous vide does to the fat, it's probably where you're experiencing that mm. textural difference because the fat's not there. Aye. It's 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 been heated, broken down, and it's now flushed through Perfect. the meat. Aye. Um, whereas you don't always get the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm with a, a pan steak because the, 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 the heat's so so aggressive. We'll take some of the... So what, what do you think in comparison to a... Is it... Better, worse, different? I'd say texture-wise, it's better. I think for folk who've got that kind of... I've seen a fear of eating steak or, or something like that where they don't want to be chewing something but then mm -hmm. you're never going to have a sous vide steak that's cooked well done the way Tracy likes kind of thing so you're kind of that might be an experiment for another day because you can cook it sous vide you can, the, temp, the thing mm -hmm. that makes a steak obviously real well done is not how long you cook it it's the temperature you get the internal uh -huh. so if the internal temperature well done is 76 80 degrees that's bad you get, you get if you can get the you get the water bath up to that, mm. cook it water for an hour, the whole state will be 80 degrees. Uh -huh. right, it, right, it right. shouldn't have lost any of its juiciness. Like, maybe maybe some will try this after then. Um, you no, know, we've got another fellow. No, we've got mm -hmm. another fellow there. Um, so let's let's move on to the the last one. See that just picking this up, I can feel a difference in this steak because it, that one was a bit floppy and relaxed, right. not kind of. Mm -hmm. Would you say that? I've been in the hot tub for an hour. And the pan, though, it's more dense than maybe that is, where it, like the feeling of that one. Like, see, when you picked that up there, that looks more. See, that's, that's a traditionally mm -hmm. medium steak with a little bit of flakes in the middle. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take that one off you. It's like that. No. <laughs> I'm going to give you. A, I'm going to get you to try that one. They do look different, and like when you look at them, they kind of look the same. No, though. no but they look different as well. It's, 
how they look on the top mm -hmm. more to and definitely it's even just the way they're sitting on the plate you can see that one is relaxed and it's kind of oh. flopped on top of the other one whereas this has kept its, its turgidness <laughs> I was trying to talk about this without setting gigging. anybody off without going <laughs> gigging from ways so we don't need to get a photograph of that because I'm just a photo it's a stick. Um, dig in give us your thoughts I would imagine and this is nothing about the meat I think you'll find that Chewier. That's not, that's not your glass. Should I give you that's a glass right. back? We're all pals. <laughs> mm. That one's fighting back a bit more. Mm -hmm. It's more like you're eating a steak. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how you cook things on the, the Aye, the same thing is completely same. different. Oh. So yeah. It's completely different. That two, the same steak cut from the same. I thought you cut mm -hmm. them yesterday. Cut from the same beast. Exact same beast. Same carcass. Mm -hmm. Cooked two different ways. Cooked to the same temperature. Mm -hmm. But totally different. Of the same accompaniments and the same flavouring, salt, pepper, everything was done. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. I, I must admit, I would. That would be my preference. I'd kind of be more drawn towards trying that again myself. I mean steaks. Right like... No, 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 no. <laughs> Trying to replicate what ah. you've done. Yeah. But actually, the replication is easy. You put it in a back bag, you put it in one of them, Aye. and you walk away. Um, but yeah. I would never have believed that there was such a big difference ah. in what you've just said, the exact same thing, done differently, with a completely different yeah. result. What's, what's your favourite? That's what Laura just said. What steak do you prefer? Hmm... I think that's that's a like creature habit. Do you know what I mean? That's habit. Aye. But I think because that's, that's a wee bit different. Yeah. Uh -huh. Aye. You'd be kind of say, say that, that one. A bit more. Say the, the No, you can say that one. I'm. What well, I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just. Uh, it's the same. Aye. thing though, it's not as if it's, it's different. Aye. It's cooked. It's cooked differently, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. What we should do, and this is only a suggestion. You can feel well to say Peter, fuck off. When we do the recorded shows, let's do a similar show to this, but we'll cut out all the shit in the middle, and we'll do a fillet. A sirloin, don't you do a ribeye, and we'll do some, we'll do three different steaks, and we'll do them exactly the same way, and we'll maybe get some other people up. And I don't know about sharing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, let, let's, let's do it as a proper, you know, Aye, okay. experiment. Of, Aye. You know, it's interesting. And, and, yeah, that would be. It's no, but what I was is if we can do that and then keep the people away and just put place a steak out and go, tell me which one, you know, do uh, like a blind taste. A blind taste, taste Aye. So we'll do that as one of the recorded shows. Aye. If you're up for it. Aye, definitely. Cool. And then we can get Danielle up to get her opinion as well. Absolutely. She won't know you tell her that. Is she not? No. She no, no, is, is it too Excuse me. No, as rare looking as that. She, definitely, you'd need a blindfolder. She wants she, she want, she, she want to go full Tracy. No, 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 no. No, no quite. No, no, no quite as bad as Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, guys. So I will we'll, we'll wrap, wrap this up for today. So Kevin, thank you very much no, for, for being our guest for, today. Thank you for having me. Um, Best and, Saturday lunch I've had for and thanks a long for, time. for your support with the show and the channel. So it's literally since day one. And same for you. You've never away from my door or <laughs> off the phone. What have you got? <laughs> um, and again, to everybody watching at home, thank you. I hope you're enjoying the new format with the guest. Um, so we've got a couple of great guests coming up. Not to say the guests we haven't had this far have been great. Matt Ferguson was written there. <laughs> Channel was good. Um, but um, yeah, so thanks very much. Thanks for sticking with us. Again, the usual bollocks. If you if there's somebody in your timeline or somebody in your friends list that you think would enjoy this nonsense, share it with one pair. I'm not going to do the whole YouTube. Share it with everybody. Like, subscribe. If you liked it, click like. Uh, if you want to subscribe, you want to see more of this pish. Subscribe. <laughs> um, if you don't, yeah, fuck you. Um, if, if, if you're somebody, oh, my uncle Bobby would love that, or my auntie Jeannie would love that, or cousin Frank would be into that, share it with them. If you want to share it with more, please do. Um, but thanks for joining us every week. And I'm going to fuck off and buy a motorcycle. I've already bought it. Pick up a motorcycle. Um, thanks to Nibbles, who always helps on the desk. Um, <laughs> Thanks to Tracy, who keeps out the way. Um, if you want to support the channel, go to the shop, drop a, drop a couple of quid for a coffee, or 
buy a t-shirt or a book or a knife or something. Yeah. Um, again, it's not retiring money. I certainly did not buy a motorcycle with the money that I made off of Pirate King Kitchen. Um, but it helps us buy meat for this man and um, buy goodies and helps hopefully educate yes, educate people or open people's mm -hmm. minds. Um, next week, kind of barbecue episode, so look forward to seeing you. So there's only one thing left to do. Hit my music. Take me about the CV and let him try it. It's my channel, I'll see you.